joined now by former data chief and strategist Trump, uh, for Trump, uh, for President Matt B uh, Brainard in Washington, and the attorney Eric Guster in Alabama. And we'll also speak to the Washington Post columnist and professor of politics at UCL, Brian Class in uh, Sussex here in the UK. Uh, let's come to you first, Matt. I mean. You know, we spoke to you earlier on in the show uh, and you're of the feeling that, you know, Trump did very little wrong when it came to his messaging about the virus and the mask. But, you know, quite often when leaders speak and the first things they say on these subjects, they stick, you know, and, and, and he did say back in April, after the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention first released guidance on wearing masks in early April, this is when, the, you know, most of countries around the world were on serious lockdown situations. Trump announced the recommendation but said he won't be doing it personally. That kind of stuff sticks, doesn't it? And the reason why I think it's important that we're talking about it now is that the impact that, you know, president, President's words have had on people all around the world, and we're now hoping he makes a speedy recovery, and we're now hoping that perhaps he will learn from that and come out with a far more positive uh, message. Would you go with that, Matt? I would say that the CDC's guidance on this issue has been inconsistent, including their own guidance that masks are not necessary, including the World Health Organization's own guidance saying that masks were not necessary early on. This president has taken the lead on the issue, going all the way back to January, warning about this disease and preparing our government to combat it. Back when the Democrats were chasing around this, Im this uh, impeachment hoax and calling people racist for refusing to go out to mass rallies in March and in February when this disease was really starting to pick up steam in the United States. So you're sort of picking at little issues on the side when the focus is his policies and his guidance uh, to the country on this issue. He's He's been ahead of the curve consistently. And I want to add, I think it's really disgusting, all the voices I hear in my ear talking about karma, as if the president somehow deserves this. I want to point out that the UK has a higher death rate per capita than the United States does from COVID. And I know that Boris Johnson came down with this. I don't know if, if the word karma was on the tips of your tongue then when he came down with this, was it? Because well, it's really there disgusting were, There in were this people case. that criticised um, uh, the Prime Minister too, but also, of course, many, many others. Karma? As many, many others are feeling huge sympathy and concern for Donald Trump. So it's not, it's not a right, personal but thing, but is just on the issue of wearing masks and the general approach. This is um, what Donald Trump had to say about Joe Biden's perceived, in his eyes, overcautiousness of wearing a mask. Let's have a look. Now, I know he's not directly mocking the use of wearing masks there, but he is making capital of it. He is making capital of it and a jokey situation about something that that filters down and filters through. And he was yeah. hoping that people would see Joe Biden as silly. His ma if you go to his rallies, they distribute hand sanitizer, they give away free masks. You run B-roll of his rallies, which I'm sure you have. The entire crowd behind him, you can't find a face without a mask. So he's very, I think the, the president is taking this situation much more seriously than his opponent has, who was holding rallies in March with no mask and no social distancing right as this disease was starting to, to crest here in the United States. So you're, you're sort of picking out like some little joke throwaway line. When you look at the actual policies that this president has advocated versus that of his opponent, they're light years apart. And President Trump has done the best possible job in terms of leading this country, given what we knew at the time with COVID. And Biden is just it's in, it's incomprehensible that he's going around telling people that you know if he was president not a single american would have ever died from covid he's he's giving speeches where he's literally saying that and that just shows you how disconnected he is from the seriousness of this disease how the democrats are completely disconnected from the seriousness of this disease going all the way back to the beginning president trump spoke about this the danger of this in his state of the union in january nancy pelosi tore that speech up and then called people racist for refusing to go out to chinese new year celebrations for fear of getting the disease. So we need to set the record straight okay. and not buy into this bogus narrative that the president doesn't uh, care about the disease or take it seriously. Uh, uh, Eric Guster, those who are opponents, uh, political opponents, not supporters of Donald Trump, they have to be very careful with their words at the moment. I mean, I, I, you know, personally, I think the word karma is utterly disgusting for, for a word to be used right now. And, and I think, you know, we have to understand why, you know, why would you use those words? Why would you wish that on Donald Trump? What, what sense are you getting in America? What, what do you, how do you see this playing out over the next number of weeks for Donald Trump? Um, some people are using those words. I'm definitely not. Uh, no one wants anyone to suffer, even whether or not whether they are a person of opposite political views or
person who has racist views or really detrimental to our society. We don't want that person to suffer. However, we're in a situation where we have a president who downplayed this entire disease. He downplayed it from the beginning. And it's very interesting when you have pundits like the man who was on a few minutes ago, who was saying that Donald Trump was speaking out against this. That's not true. Donald Trump said this was Democratic hoax from the beginning. He's mocked people the entire time for wearing masks. He's encouraged his followers to not wear a mask because mask wearing has become this partisan issue and it should not be a partisan issue. This is something that is simply about health and safety. Eric, I just want to clarify something, actually. You know, you, know, you said this earlier on in the show, and we did, we did look this up. He, Donald Trump, in, in, in his defence, did not call it a democratic hoax. It was, mm. He was calling the response of the Democratic Party a hoax. He thought they were politicising it. So I think we have he to be... He wasn't calling the pandemic... He wasn't saying the actual pandemic a, hoax. a democratic hoax. And I think we just have to really response. get that clear. But can, can I just push the point here a little bit? B by making these points, Eric, what are you hoping for? What, what are you now... How is this going to make the situation better? The fact is Donald Trump is effectively fighting for his life. We will hope he will be absolutely fine. We'll know in a few more days whether he's contracted any serious symptoms. But by bringing this up now about his, his behaviour before now, what is the point of that right now? What are you hoping for? Well, you asked me about what the, what the sentiment of the United States is right now. That's what I was responding to. I want him to be fine. I don't want, I don't wish death or serious illness on anyone, including Donald Trump. Many of my followers, I did a Facebook Live where we were discussing it, and I asked all of them, do not wish any harm to this man. This is our leader, whether we like him or not, this is our president. And in order to have a safe, safe country, we have to have leaders who are in good shape. We have to have leaders who are healthy and make sure that we don't reach a crisis with our government. So we do need him to be healthy, and I hope that he gets healthy soon. And I also hope that this changes the narrative of the people yeah. who are avoiding wearing masks and yeah. think that COVID-19 is no big deal, that they okay. will take it seriously because we're in the middle of this pandemic, really at the beginning of the pandemic, and it's going to take a while to fight it, and we need everyone on board to make sure that we fight it and really eliminate it. Now, Washington Post columnist and professor of politics at UCL, Brian Class, is in Sussex this morning for us. Um, we're looking at both sides uh, of the pond in this and how all of this affects. Um, just to say before we, we come to you, because I'm sure you want to react to it, uh, CNN is currently reporting that both Hope Hicks, the aide who first tested positive with COVID-19, and Donald Trump, uh, who also has now tested um, positive, were, among many others, in a small conference room, unmasked for days, prepping for the debate. Now, that is what they are reporting, and that is the problem at the core of this, Brian Class, isn't it? Everybody wishes Donald Trump well, personally. Nobody wants to see anybody badly affected by this virus, or Melania, for that matter, or Hope Hicks. But politics and the disease are completely fused together. How politicians approach and the words they use towards a virus here and there, and, and how they behave and the messages it sends about how seriously they're taking it. That's absolutely true. And I think that there has been a systematic pattern of the president to downplay the virus to the American public. Um, you know, when there was public health regulations put in place in various states in May, Donald Trump tweeted to liberate those states from the public health uh, regulations that his own administration sanctioned. Two days ago, he made fun of Joe Biden on the debate stage about wearing a mask. Um, when the mask guidance was released from the CDC, he said he personally would not be wearing one. So all of this says to the public who pays attention to the president's words, you don't need to do this. And if you needed any greater reminder of that, it was when Donald Trump accepted the Republican presidential nomination he had 1,500 people on the White House lawn, most of them unmasked, with no social distancing. Mm. So, you know, I don't wish harm on anyone, and I want President Trump to have a swift and healthy recovery. Mm. But we need to think about how this is going to affect public policy. And 1,000 people are dying a day of COVID-19 in the United States right now, literally right now. Mm. And so we need to take this seriously, and people need to listen to public health advice not people who are peddling unproven drugs like hydroxychloroquine or hypothesizing about injecting disinfectants and their curative properties. Okay. Uh, we Brian, need to listen to public health experts and we need to listen to them now. 
Brian, just on a practical point, in terms of the election itself, could this have a detrimental effect on the election? Could we even be in a situation where the election could be suspended? It could be delayed either by calls from the Republican Party uh, or... Is that even perhaps... technically possible? Yeah, I mean, is it even... Is it... I mean, I'm guessing it's unprecedented. Has this kind of thing happened before? It is unprecedented, and there is no clear-cut uh, procedure for what happens if the president is in somehow incapacitated this close to an election. There is a procedure called the 25th Amendment that if the president cannot discharge his duties, a majority of the cabinet can vote to remove him from power, at least temporarily. And that hopefully will not happen. Um, there's also a clear line of succession, which would go to Mike Pence first and then Nancy Pelosi as the Speaker of the House after that. Again, hopefully that doesn't happen. In terms of the election itself, we do not have any precedent for this. And because the states run the elections in the United States individually, there are big questions about what would actually occur. It would be up to the political parties as to whether they would replace a candidate on the ballot. But many people, you know, including myself, have already voted in this election because of mail-in balloting and absentee balloting. So the ballots are already with voters right now to a large extent. And so there's not a very okay. easy procedure for how to deal with this if anything does develop in a more serious okay. way.